Right, so the tools we're going to need so need a small Phillips screwdriver, side cutters, and long nose pliers, just in case there's any fiddly parts that you can't reach very well. Right, you can see I've got all the side panels off this case. And it, in fact, it even has a, remove, it has a removable motherboard tray. So I've taken all that out and taken the top panel off as well. First job I'm going to do with the case is install the power supply. Now I like doing this first, so that way you've got an earthing point within the case. And you'll notice here that I'm wearing an anti-static strap. It's certainly worth investing in one of these. They only cost a few pounds. I bought mine off eBay. Now assembling the power supply. You see mine's at the top of the case. Most of the cases they are at the bottom. So either way, you just drop it in and then you bolt it on. It's got the four screws going through the back of the case and into the power supply. So I'm just doing them finger tight first. In fact, I notice a couple of them are at a bit of an angle so the case doesn't quite line up with the power supply. You get that quite a few times, but as, as long as you can just tighten the screws up, it'd be okay. Which you need to watch which way you're putting on the power supply into the case. So for this case, I'll grab the fan or venting area at the top. If you've got the bottom mounted fans, you need the fan intake coming from the bottom of the case. Now I've got to plug the power supply into the mains. The mains is switched off, I'm only doing this so I've got an earthing point. So that's that. Now the next job I'm going to start on is put some putting some components on the motherboard. Just take that out of the anti-static bag. Just try and hold that by the heat sink on there. Right, notice that this motherboard already comes with a heatsink and processor installed. Most of the time you have to drop the CPU onto the board. you just got to basically look which way you're dropping the CPU. So that's a little like triangle in the corner. Just assemble that onto the motherboard, drop it in very carefully. The pins are very delicate on the CPU. And next, after you put the CPU in, you will install some memory. There's one more tool that comes in handy when you're building a computer. A knife to open up all the packaging. Damn sellotape. Right, what we've got to look for on the memory. There's a little notch on each of the boards. That needs to align up on the muff board with a notch there. Very carefully take the memory out of the packaging. I want to do what I did there. Ideally, you want to hold it at the top corners. This one's quite easy because it has a great heat sink across it. Metal heat sink as well, I notice. Right, just open up the side clips on the board and drop it in. Push it down reasonably hard. So the clips then spring back and I'll clip the memory into place. If when you come to power the computer on, it reports less memory than you've installed, then it's likely you haven't got all the clips down quite right. Next, drop the second block in there. Just push it right down, and then it clips in. Easy. You could have up to four memory blocks to do there, but this board only has two slots on it. Right, next job you're going to do now would be to install the heatsink. If you're using an aftermarket heatsink, you sometimes have to take the plastic mounting plate that comes with the motherboard. If you take it off, then you bolt through a new support at the back of the motherboard, turn it back over, and you have to bolt the heatsink onto the board. Again, I've got that luxury that I don't have to do it on this particular build. Alright, now I'm going to bolt the boards to the motherboard tray. Again, this is rather handy on this case that it has a removable tray. If it doesn't, you've got to get the case and try and mount the motherboard in there. Of course, before you do that, you need to install the motherboard backplate. I'll come on to that in a moment. I've got to get this right way around. There's a few motherboard standoff screws that have to be installed. So you just need to match that up to the holes on your motherboard. 
start bolting it down. I'm not doing these too tight initially, just because we'll get all the screws in first and then tighten them up afterwards. I have to do them off the screwdriver because I can't get my fat fingers down between these components on the mud board. It's certainly a lot easier bolting the mud board down onto a removable tray. It's actually the first case I've done with a removable tray. Yeah. So it's certainly a lot easier than trying to squeeze your hand down inside the case and try to bolt it down. Some of the screws are quite way down. It's just really awkward that. I'm right, just tightening up the screws a bit more just to make sure the mud board now stays in place. Don't want to bolt them up ever so tight, just because I don't want to damage the mouth board. Right, simple as that. Now we're going to fit this inside the case. Let's move that away. Take the case. Right, now I'm going to install the mouth board back plate. So just turn this case round. And I need to install that from the inside, making sure we get it the right way around. Just push it up until it snaps in place. There we go. Now let's try and fit the muff board in. Well, one part of this I missed off in the video, installing this little fan onto the heatsink. It was really fiddly. There's no proper screw holes for it to actually fit in. You almost have to shove the screws down between the little gaps on the heatsink. Very weird. In theory, I've just got to drop that down. Oh yeah, this is definitely easier said than done. That's it. Just got to turn it up the other way to make sure the mud boards can go on the back plate correctly. Yeah, this particular one has lots of little spring clips on it. Right, well, I skipped a bit of the video here where I installed the mud board. It took quite a bit of effort to get the mud board into the back plate down there, and then there's a lot of cursing and swearing, so I decided to just uh, remove that bit entirely. Right. Next job I'll do now is installing a hard drive. So that goes down into the hard drive bay, just down there. So I install it this side up with all the cabling towards the inside of the case. And you just need to align all these screw holes up. So that's about there on mine. I've just got to bolt it in with four screws for this particular case. I know you get some cases with like these screwless clips to hold the hard to hold like hard drives and CD drives in. Uh, some of them are alright when they're in the more expensive cases, but uh, yeah, certainly some of the cheap ones are a bit below quality really. So in that case, bolting it down with screws is a lot better, I think. It may take you an extra few seconds, but hey, what's it worth when it holds a hard drive in properly? Yeah. Alright, this is a bit fiddly now, so I've just got to stand it up to do this side. Right, just going around now and tightening up all the screws properly. That's it, that's in nicely. The uh, next job worth doing now would be installing the graphics card there in one of the PCI X16 card slots. You do that, you just take off one of, the, one of these PCI card cover slots right on the back of the case. So I think for this one I just have to unbolt this cover at the end and just slot them off. I've got an onboard graphics card though for this particular motherboard so I don't need to worry about that right now. Now I'll start putting some cables on the motherboard. I've got a nice modular power supply here, so that makes things a bit easier. So I'm going to need a 24 pin power supply for the mud board. 
on the SATA power cable. And the other cable we'll need is for the CPU power supply. This is going to be quite a challenge for this particular case. Normally a CPU would be pretty close to your power supply. On this case though, they're right at the opposite end of each other. Uh, should just about reach though. This particular case has got a cabling channel at the back of the motherboard, so we're going to try and utilise this as much as we can. Four pin CPU cable to try and go through that hole. Now up towards the power supply. For the motherboard, that is, just look around the other side, that power supply is nearer that hole. So we're going to try and put that down there. Okay, we're missing. If we're just about long enough here, we might fill this in. I think this is a bit unusual actually having to attach the motherboard power supply cable into the, into the power supply because normally they just come attached because it's going to be one of those cables you actually need. The rest of them would be optional. There's not the number of hard drives you're going to stick on and the number of Molex cables you're going to need. No, they're all optional but motherboard? No, you're always going to need one of those. Now put a SATA data cable onto the hard drive. Notice we've got right notice we've got right angled ends on the cable. I'm just gonna work out which way around's gonna be the best one for that. So we're gonna have the straight end onto the motherboard. Start at SATA number one on this side. So it's always like to plug those into the first hard drive, so SATA one on the board. Be your first hard drive. It will be a hard drive for your operating system that you boot up into by default. Because you can choose any combination there. Well, that's a bit messy for the moment, but we'll go with that and tidy the cable. We'll tidy the cabling up later on. All right, finally, we're just gonna have to do uh, get some of these case LEDs and power switch installed onto the board. For this particular case, we do have a bit of writing on the plugs, so I can identify which ones they all are. But I need to know the order that they go on, on the motherboard. To do that, we're just going to have to get the instruction manual and have a read up about it. Right there in mine. So I've just got to follow the diagram. Here it is now completed it. Got the cabling tucked neatly behind the case there. That's the minimal amount of equipment fitted in here now, so I can try power up the PC and see what happens. Okay, so to test it out, just install, just put together a couple of bits in the back. So we've just got the power supply, USB with micro SD card of Ubuntu 12.04, HDMI cable, and USB keyboard and mouse. Just bring that back round. Let's try turn it on. Hey, excellent, it's looking promising. So you can see the hard drive CPU fan has spun up. If you just look at the TV, we've got the BIOS screen. So yeah, it's looking promising. And it's managing to boot straight into Ubuntu. Oh, looking good. Right, so I'll just go for trying it out. Well, it looks good. We've got a desktop. Well, of course, got nothing else connected at the moment, so that really is it. Now I know it boots up correctly, I'll go ahead and finish putting everything else together inside the case. Here's the finished system. So I've added a Noctua fan at the back here. Still got the CPU fan on there. Not sure if I really need it or not. Got a temperature sensor on there just to check it, so I'll run it for a little while and see how it goes. Bit messy around here with the hard drive cabling, but um, well, I'll get another couple of hard drives 
over the next few months and maybe this lot will tidy up then. Got a couple of cold cathode lighting tubes, so one at the back and one at the side there. It just lights up the inside of the case and then shows blue around all the sort of cracks. Got some LED lights just inside the vents here. I'll show you that in a moment. There's the cabling at the top of the case. So I've kept it reasonably tidy here. That's just a connector for some LED, LED lighting I've got in the top. There's the back of the motherboard. Again, kept it all reasonably tidy with the cables that come out from the front panel. Just sort of curled them around a couple of places. So yeah. And just to show you the bit along the top as well. So overall you can see I've done a pretty good job of hiding some of the cabling. This is one of the extras that I've done, so the top of the case we've got some LED strip lighting so that it now glows blue on top of the power supply. It looks pretty good. Here it is with the covers on. I think that looks very bright, that lighting down the side there on the camera, but it's actually more of a darker blue in real life. I'll just show you the top of the case as well. There we are. Got nice glowing blue around the power supply. So there's the other side. In the back of the case with actually nothing much connected. I've only, I've only got the power supply and the power meter plugged in. And finally, back round to the front. Open up the door. Hey, nicely glowing blue there. Looking good. Just zooming in on the fan controller. You can see I'm running the fans fairly low speed. They are power meter, only 49 watts. If I turn the lighting off, Ooh, 38 watts now. <laughs> Pretty good. But yeah, that's how you build a computer. So thanks for watching, see you later.